Hello, this is Mario from Odeon. In this video, we would like to show you Odeon's color grids and how to use them, which is a feature in Editions Industrial, Auditorium, and Combined. A color grid in Odeon is a grid of regularly spaced receivers. Acoustic parameters are calculated at each square in the grid, and the values are displayed with colors. Additionally, Odeon interpolates the results to create a smooth color map, without the need to have a high density of receivers. So, color grids not only allow you to visualize the behavior of parameters across space, but they also make for nice figures to include in reports and presentations. To set up a grid, we go to the Define Grid button here. At the left side of the screen, you will see a list of your surfaces. By default, this will only show surfaces that are horizontal or only slightly inclined. Also, they are initially sorted by depth. This is a relative position in a specific coordinate. So, for horizontal surfaces, this would be the altitude, taking into account the whole model. Surfaces at a low altitude will have a dark red color and a black bar at the left. So here, the first surfaces are the floors at the bottom. As we scroll, the red color becomes brighter, and the black bar moves to the right. Then, the last surfaces in the list are the suspended reflectors, some side reflectors, and the ceiling, which in this model are the surfaces highest in altitude. At the right side of the screen, we will see the surfaces currently selected to have a grid on them. Right now, we don't have any. While grids can be defined manually, which we will show later, first we will show how to set them up automatically, which is especially easy if you have your surfaces grouped by layers. Remember that layers are defined in the original CAD software. We will click on this Auto Grid Detection button, and Odin will select the surfaces that seem to be most relevant. To figure out likely relevant surfaces, Odeon will use your currently defined sources and some quick ray tracing. So, you will need to already have at least one source and defined materials on all surfaces. Right now, the grids are displayed with random colors. This is only for visualization purposes, as we have not yet calculated any parameters at these grid elements. While auto grid detection is not 100% perfect, it should only need little cleanup. For example, here I would only want to delete the grids on the ceiling surfaces and suspended reflector surfaces. I will first sort by layers. I find the grids I wish to delete, click on the first one, shift click, and then click on Deselect Receiver Surface. Alternatively, you can hit Ctrl Delete on the keyboard. Changing the grid will make it disappear from the 3D view, and you can show it again by clicking on this Show Grid button or using the Ctrl G shortcut. We can adjust the density of the grid by changing this number. With a smaller separation distance between receivers or grid elements, the grid will be finer. Just remember that a too fine grid will drastically increase the calculation time, and that you can get a smooth interpolated grid without having too many elements. This number is the distance from the corresponding surface to where the grid is defined. This distance is perpendicular to the surface. You can manually change the number by double-clicking on it. Every new surface you add will be assigned this number by default. If you change it, it will assign this distance only to new selected surfaces. Unlike the distance between receivers, simply changing this number will not change your current grid's height above the surface. To assign this distance to already selected surfaces, you must highlight them, then click on this button.
you can select all surfaces with the Ctrl A shortcut. Always look here to double check the grid's distance to their corresponding surface. It is also a good idea to group surfaces, which will later allow us to view the grid results by sections. We will first click on Selected Group. When this is enabled, we will get this group column in the list of selected surfaces. We can manually group grids by selecting different groups and clicking on the check marks, or we can click on this Define Groups from Layers button. If we go to Group 4, we will see that it is called Stairs, and only the stair surfaces are selected as part of this group. If I show the grid now, it will only display the current group. As you can see, layers are extremely useful when defining grids, so always try to import your model with surfaces grouped by layers. There are more settings we can adjust, but first, let's try to calculate and display some results with our current defined grid. We will close the Define Grid window to save our grid. Then we go to the job list. We will calculate grid results for these three jobs. Although the same grid applies to all jobs, here each job will have a different source. We should make sure to enable grid calculations overall, as well as for the specific jobs. Then we can just click on Run All Jobs, which will calculate all enabled jobs. Grid responses calculate for many receivers, so it will take considerably longer than multipoint and single point responses. Here are some calculation times per job and per source for this model, with different grid densities, processors, and number of late rays. When done, you can look at your results by having a job selected and then clicking on View Grid Response. Keep in mind that here you can use the same default views from the 3D view, and you can also define custom views as you would in the 3D view. We explain default views in our video on the 3D view and 3D render. By default, it will show the interpolated color map, but you can see the individual elements when you rotate the model. You can disable interpolation altogether by pressing the I key. The current parameter and octave band will be shown here next to the color scale. You can navigate through octave bands with the up and down arrows. And you can navigate through the parameters with the left and right arrows. When interpolation is disabled, you can scroll through parameters quicker. If you hover the mouse at a specific point, you will see the parameters value at that point at the bottom left corner of the window. If you would like a clear view of the color map, you can have it drawn on top of the geometry by pressing the D key. Remember that you can find all functions and shortcuts for any current window and tab in the context sensitive menu up here. You can adjust the scale range while viewing the results. You can look at a narrower range by holding left click and dragging towards the bottom right in this area, just like when zooming in on plots. The scale range will be adjusted to the highlighted range. And you can shift the scale range by holding right click and dragging the mouse. You can reset to the original scale range by holding left click and dragging towards the top left. This resets the range regardless of the size of the rectangle. Now we will make use of the groups we created earlier. You can navigate through your groups with the G key. The name of the currently displayed group will be shown down here.
Also, if you calculated more than one job, which we did, you can scroll through the jobs with the J key. This is useful to compare results with different active sources. You can directly export your current view as a figure with the copy-paste shortcuts. That is, simply hit Ctrl-C to copy, and then Ctrl-V to paste in a Microsoft Office software or a graphics editor. The figure is exported with the current window size. We recommend to make the window smaller so that the text isn't too small compared to the full figure. We have another video where we make recommendations for exporting clear figures. Most parameters will use a default color scale, which you can change in options, program setup, grid settings. These settings are the program defaults regardless of the model. You can also customize the default ranges and color scales for individual parameters. You can configure this by going to the Room Acoustic Parameter list. And then clicking on Expand Tables. At the top right, you will find the frequency dependent parameters. While down here, you will find the broadband parameters. A blank selection here means it will use the default color scale, but you can select a specific color scale for the parameter. To set a manual range, enable manual grid, then change the min and max values. It is also possible to define color maps that will look more like a contour plot. For example, STI is defined this way by default, where each color represents a descriptive quality of speech intelligibility. To get a plot like this, you must disable smooth colors. However, to be able to disable smooth colors, you must also manually select a color scale. Then, instead of producing smooth transitions from each color to the next, it will show an abrupt change. You can also create custom color scales, which is explained in another video. Changing the grid settings in the room acoustic parameter list will only change it for the current model. Another thing you can do after defining a grid is visualizing the direct sound emitted by a source. By direct sound, we mean not taking into account any reflections. You actually don't need a calculated job to see this. You only need to have defined a source and a grid. This is the direct sound emitted by the sources active in the selected job. At the bottom left, you can change from visualizing SPL to visualizing arrival time. You can also see the direct sound for a specific source when defining or editing a source in the source receiver list by going to the 3D Direct tab. Let's go back to Define Grid. And now we will make some manual definitions. First, I will remove all my current surfaces. Then, I will only add the stage surface. I highlight it, then click on Select Receiver Surface. Notice that it has disappeared from the room surface list. 
This is because, by default, Odeon assumes you will only want one grid per surface. But we can also add several layers of grids over a single surface. To do that, we will need to disable this exclusive surfaces checkbox. The stage surface is again available, and we can add it as many times as we want. This time, I will add the surface by pressing the insert key. And I will change each of the grid's distance here. We can see the three grid layers in the 3D model. Let's also try adding some vertical grids. They will be categorized based on which axis they are mainly facing. Let's look at surfaces mainly facing the y-axis, and hide the horizontal surfaces. In this model, the y-axis is the lateral direction. So now, the depth represents left to right position from the audience perspective. Also, depth in the y-direction is represented in green. For the x-direction, it will be blue. Since the surfaces are initially sorted by depth, we will first see all surfaces furthest at a specific side, in this case, to the left of the audience. Although here we use the term height, remember that this is a distance perpendicular to the surface, so in this case it will instead be a horizontal distance. As a side note, keep in mind that you can also add negative distances, which will allow you to place the grid on the opposite side of the surface. For grids that would end up outside the model, Odeon will usually automatically invert the direction of the distance, but we still encourage to double check. As we mentioned before, we can manually define grid groups. I will define two groups, stage multilayer and left wall. We go to Selected Group, rename Group 1, and click on the Group 1 checkbox for the three stage grids. This makes the stage grids part of Group 1. Now I go to Group 2, Rename it, and click on the checkbox for the rest of the surfaces. For many surfaces, the easiest way to do this is to click on the first one, and then alternate down arrow and spacebar. We will close the Define Grids window to make sure our new grid is saved. Before explaining the autoscaling properties, it will be useful to talk about the distribution graph, which is found in a tab while viewing the grid response. The x-axis shows a parameter and an octave band. And the y-axis shows the percent of receivers equal or lesser than that value. For example, here, 65% of the receivers have 2.1 seconds or less of EDT at the 1 kHz octave band. As usual, you can go through octave bands and parameters with the arrow keys. At the bottom right, you will see the average, minimum, and maximum values. However, keep in mind that minimum and maximum values can often be outliers with extreme values. So, it can be a good habit to instead look at the 5 and 95 percentiles of values. These would be very close to the minimum and maximum values while also avoiding extreme outliers. 
You can also look at other percentiles such as 10 and 90, as well as subtractions of percentiles. The graph can be adjusted to different percentile ranges with the spacebar. If you hit the spacebar three times, you will get the full curve. And it becomes easy to observe why minimum and maximum values are problematic. Another useful tab is the Fractals and Average tab. It shows the same statistic values, but with the octave bands and parameters in the axes, and specific percentage values as separate curves. This teal curve shows the average values. Back in the Define Grid window, these autoscaling properties are to establish the range of the color scale when looking at the results. By default, the color scale is limited between the 5 and 95 percentiles of the cumulative distribution function for each parameter individually. Values below or above this range will simply be shown with the bottom or top color respectively. As explained earlier, the minimum and maximum values tend to be extreme outliers. So by trimming them out, the color scale is optimized to a range more relevant to your model. By default, the range is optimized considering results at all octave bands for each parameter. But if you wish to define the percentile limits based on results from a limited frequency range, you can select the frequency range here. For example, you could set the limits to the 5 and 95 percentiles of the results from 500 Hz to 2 kHz. If you wish to scale the color range from the actual minimum value to the actual maximum value, you can just set 0 and 100 here. Though you will lose detail at the most relevant range in your model. A useful trick is the ability to define sources and receivers at the location of grid elements. There are two places where you can do this. When defining the grid, and when viewing the grid response. To do this in the Define Grid window, first click on the top window to make it active. Then hover the mouse over the desired position. Finally, hit Shift-P to create a point source, or Shift-R to create a receiver. The description of the source or receiver will specify that it was created from a grid. To create a source or receiver while viewing the grid response, first you must disable interpolation. Again, this is done with the I key. Then hover to the desired position and hit Shift-P or Shift-R. In this video, we have shown how to create color grids on surfaces in your model. But if you wish to calculate a color grid at an arbitrary location, this is possible as well. To do this, you will need to draw a surface in the original 3D model that will serve as a reference for the color grid. Back in Odeon with the updated geometry, you will need to assign the transparent material to that surface. This is so that the surface doesn't have any influence on the calculations. Finally, in the Define Grid window, you can define a grid on the reference surface like you have done for actual surfaces. A useful application of this is to create a vertical cross-section grid response of your room, regardless of the shape of your room. With that, we conclude this tutorial, and we hope you have found it useful. Good luck, 